may not come as any great surprise to you, but today is Christmas Day in Wistful Vista. And here at number 79, an eminent local philosopher is explaining the true spirit of Christmas giving to his wife as we join Fibber McGee and Molly. It's like I say, Molly, it ain't the cost of the gift that counts with me. It's the sentiment, the heart that goes into it. That's a nice attitude for you to take, dear. Yeah. And a strange one. <laughs> now, the trouble with a lot of people is they make Christmas too commercial. When I give, I give from the heart. Like this doll here I got for Teeny. This cost me plenty. But so what? Well, it's a beautiful big doll, all right. You know, I'd like to have that myself. Well, the very next time you're eight years old, I'll buy you one. To... <laughs> Sweet, like I say, it ain't the dough that counts with me, it's the sentiment. I wonder what Doc Gamble has given us this year. I spent seven bucks for that fountain pen I got him. Is that the one from Kramer's Drugstore? The pen that writes under ether? <laughs> That's it, seven smackers. Well, now, the good doctor won't care what it costs. It's the heart you put in it that counts. You said. Yeah. I put plenty of heart in it, too. I shopped all over town before I found this bargain. Kramer's give me a discount on it on account of because the point was bent a little, but I just took some pliers. And... Hold it, dear. We have company. Merry Christmas and come in. Thank you, Molly, and happy Yuletide to you both. <laughs> well, well, if it isn't jolly old Saint Nickum for plenty. <laughs> Happy Noah, Apple Cheeks. Thank you, my boy. Do my cheeks really look that rosy? Oh, I didn't mean the color. I meant the shape. <laughs> Looks like you're packing an apple in each cheek, that's all. <laughs> an apple, huh? Yeah. I suppose you mean a wine sap. Mm. <laughs> ah, that was cute, Doctor. Well, I've got a little present here, kids. Just a little token of my affection for you guys. Oh, that's nice, Doc. Yeah, gee whiz, you shouldn't have done it, Doc. Oh, the heck I shouldn't, huh? If I walked in here empty-handed on Christmas Day, I'd never hear the end of it. <laughs> You're not just whistling Dixie, boy. <laughs> it feels heavy. I wonder what it... Oh, oh look, look, McGee. What a beautiful ashtray. <laughs> It's silver, too. Yeah, silver ashtray. Just what we needed. Oh, good. Yeah, and we got really something special for you, Doc. Oh. Something you don't get every day. It's uh, under here someplace. Have you gotten lots of nice presents today, Doctor? Yep, the loot's been pretty good, Molly. Among other things, various patients have gifted me so far with seven fountain pens. <laughs> What did you say? Seven fountain pens. Yep. Five of them right under ether. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, this is a very interesting looking little package from you kids. I, um, <clears throat> I'll open it when I get home. I like to be surprised. Yes. You do that, Doctor. Thank you again for the ashtray. Yeah, it's, it's just lovely, George. And thank you. Beautiful ashtray. Just love it. Uh, goodbye now. Goodbye, Merry Doctor. Christmas. <laughs> well, of all the cheap two-bit Christmas presents, a silver ashtray. Oh, McGee, I think it's beautiful. My gosh, you'd think if he was only going to give us a little old ashtray, no bigger than a dinner plate, he'd at least make it a gold one. That's what that fountain pen was, ten karat gold. The point of it. <laughs> I know, but after all, That's dear... the trouble with people at Christmas. Too dad ratted commercial about it. Trying to save a few bucks on their best friends oh, and buy... Oh, hold it. More callers. Mm. Come in and Merry Christmas. Happy Yuletide, kids! Joy Hooks Noel, Johnny. <laughs> Same to you, old-timer. Glad you stopped by, Mr. Old-timer. We have a present for you. Yeah, here, here, here you are, boy. Happy Yule. Well, bless your heart, kids. Just what I needed. Well, you don't know what it is yet. No, but you try to think of something I don't need, daughter. <laughs> like I says to Bessie today, Bessie, I says, there were mighty handsome mittens you knit for me, baby. But they ain't got no thumbs in them, Bessie, I says. 
And she says, you know why they got no thumbs in them? And I says, why? And she says, because them mittens is a pair of socks. <laughs> kids, my present for you. Oh, my gosh. Look at that, Molly. A bowling ball. My goodness. Uh, Johnny. Oh, uh, this is wonderful, old timer. Must have set you back 15 bucks. No chiseling on prices here, Molly. This is from the heart. Yeah, but, but, This but, is uh, real Christmas giving, boy. Let me have to the minute and see. Whoop. Hey, don't drop it, Johnny. I'm trying to tell you. That ain't a bowling ball. Huh? That's my own special homemade plum pudding. <laughs> What? Plum pudding? You made it yourself? Yep. Old family recipe, daughter. Says to mix it up, roll it in a cheesecloth bag, and steam it for two hours. Oh, yes, you always steam a plum pudding. Yep, well, I ain't equipped to do that at home, daughter. So I took it over to the Turkish bath, clumb into a booth, and just sat there and held it till it was cooked. <laughs> Hope you like it, kid. Oh, we we'll love it, boy. Wonderful. Look at that dad rat thing, plum pudding. Ha! <laughs> that was the type guy that makes Christmas strictly commercial. I could tell you right to the penny that so far we're $12.80 behind. <laughs> but what's what you sewing? This? Yeah. Oh, it's just an old rag doll that Teeny left here weeks ago. Oh. I'm patching it up for her. Well, I wouldn't waste much time on it, kiddo. This big Gloria glitter doll that I got for her will knock her eyes out. I hope this turns out to be a guy with a little true Christmas spirit for a change, because so far... Come in. Hello, Lee. Merry Christmas. Well, Merry Christmas, Mrs. And to you, McGee. Well, thanks, Ollie. You having a nice Christmas, boy? Oh, sure, McGee. When you get a house full of kids, you always have a nice Christmas. If you can just get out of the house once in a while. <laughs> oh, I'll bet it was Bedlam around there this morning. Mrs., it was used pure murder. Four o'clock this morning, me and the missus jump out of bed with a noise downstairs like six little kids is killing each other. Heavenly days, what was it? Used three little kids killing each other. <laughs> that Lolly and little Sven and little Canute is beating each other's brains out with stockings full of nuts and oranges. Well, that must have been something. Oh, hey, we got a present for you in here someplace, Ollie. Oh, that's what I stopped there for, McGee. My oh. missus sends you a dresser scarf, missus. She makes it herself. Oh, lovely, Ollie. Your wife does such beautiful embroidery. Mm, and for you, McGee, a box of cigars. School. Oh, gee, swell, Ollie. Cigars, just what I wanted. Well, here, this is for you. Cost me a fortune, boy, but you deserve it. <laughs> Thanks, McGee. And you can say what you please about the bedlam at home, Ollie, but children really make Christmas happy, don't they? Oh, sure. We had a very happy Christmas, missus. When I left a while ago, little Sven was crying because his toys was busted. Little Ollie was crying because Santa Claus didn't bring him an atom bomb. <laughs> Christina was crying because her boyfriend don't wear a necktie she knits for him, and the missus was crying because Christina was crying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And me, I think I go cut my throat with a roasty axe. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thanks for the cigar. Look at them cheesy snipes. <laughs> Alfalfas. Three for a quarter. If that ain't the cheapest chiseling. Well, what kind do you usually smoke me? Alfalfas. <laughs> My gosh, if Ole wanted to give me something in the true spirit of Christmas, he'd give me something I didn't buy for myself every day, wouldn't he? Boy, I'm glad I ain't the kind of a guy that's cheap about my best friend. Merry but... Christmas, kids. Oh, happy Yuletide, Junior. Have you had a nice day, Mr. Wilcox? You know, I worry about you poor lonely bachelors during the holidays. Oh, everything's been fine, Molly. My apartment is just as Christmassy as any home in town. <laughs> I wish you could see my tree, kids. I'd like to. Really looks great with the lights shining on it. The cans of pet milk hanging from every branch. <laughs> My gosh, pet milk cans on a Christmas tree. Sure. You probably hung another one over your door instead of mistletoe. How'd you know? <laughs> and I thought I was kidding. <laughs> did you get a girl to stand under the pet milk can, Mr. Wilcox? Yes, I did, Molly. A group of friends came over... And I maneuvered a very lovely young lady under it. Oh, you dog. <laughs> <laughs> you 
<laughs> well, well, she. <laughs> you ruined. <laughs> you ruined. <laughs> well, she she lifted her face to be kissed, and I moved toward her. Oh, uh, and then you took her in your arm. Well, no. The <laughs> recipe on the label of pet milk can caught my eye, and I stopped to read it. This, this, this is an awful thing to say, Junior, but you know I believe you. <laughs> well, pal, <laughs> I, I just couldn't resist. It was one of those fine husband-tested recipes that come as a dividend on every tall can of pet. Told how to use pet milk, that good, sweet country milk, made double rich by evaporation, yeah. to make a fabulous dish uh, Mr. For... Wilcox, uh, uh, Mr. Wilcox, uh, did you kiss the poor girl, Lynn, I hope? Well, no. That was odd, Molly. After I read the recipe, I looked down, the girl was gone. <laughs> Probably got a better offer. <laughs> That wouldn't be too tough. <laughs> well, let's get down to the business of the day. I got a present here for you, Junior. And I've got one for you, pal. Well, here's mine to you. Here's mine to you. Go ahead, open yours up. All right. You open yours up. Ah, just what I wanted. A case of pet milk. <laughs> and just what I wanted. A case of pet milk. <laughs> well, Merry Christmas, Junior. Merry Christmas, pal. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> Well, now, isn't that cute? Yeah. We exchanged exactly the same gifts. Yep. Yeah. For the first time today, I finally broke even. <laughs> McGee, I wish you'd get over that commercial attitude. It ain't me that's commercial, Molly. It's the people that try to chisel on people's presents. Come in. Oh, Merry Christmas, Mr. Wimple. Merry Christmas, folks. <laughs> Hi, Wimp. Come in. We have a little remembrance for you, Mr. Wimple. Give it to him, dearie. Yeah, sure. Here you are, Wimp. In the true Christmas spirit, boy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. how nice. A china teapot. Yeah. Oh, it's lovely, folks. <laughs> I hope you don't mind that scratch on the bottom of it. That's where I scraped off the $12 price tag. <laughs> Oh, Sweetie Face and I will treasure it always. And I bought you a little present, too. Oh. Here, this is for the both of you. From me. Oh, how thoughtful of you. Open it, dearie. Yeah. I can't see. What is it? Well, uh... <laughs> it looks like a stuffed bird. <laughs> what is it, Wimp? A stuffed bird. It just didn't seem possible. It's just what we wanted, Mr. Wimple. Oh, yeah, we don't have a single stuffed bird in the whole house. Well, now, this bird is charming. Yeah. We'll keep it on the, uh... Uh, we'll put it in the, uh... <clears throat> Well, for now, I'll put it right here. Yeah. That's wonderful, Wimp. Just love it. Well, I'll be running along now. Goodbye. Well, thanks, Bye. Wimp. Well, good. Oh, look at that. Twelve bucks for a teapot, and what do we get? A lumpy-looking, cockeyed, half-molded brush rooster. I ought to take the dad ratted thing and throw it clean out But it's the sentiment that counts, dearie. Uh, the Christmas spirit. Christmas spirit, my clavicle. <laughs> I break my neck running from store to store buying costly presents so as I can get back dresser doilies and stuffed dicky birds. <laughs> I'm tired of being the victim of all this commercial. Hold it. Come in. 
Merry Christmas, Molly. Merry Christmas, McGee. And the same to you, Mr. May. Yeah, season's greetings, Latrev. Come on in. Holy smoke. Is that a Christmas necktie you got on? Yes, as a matter of fact, it is. Do you like it? <laughs> Tell old dad, son. Who done it to you? <laughs> it was a gift from a very charming young lady. Oh, did she like the pair of spectacles you gave her? I didn't give her a pair of spectacles. Well, you should have. <laughs> Any dame that buys a necktie that looks like a bomb went off in a paint shop deserves a spare of spectacles. Uh, who is the girl, Mr. Mayor? Anyone we know? Uh, no, no. She's only been in town for a month. Her name is Nancy Hollister. Just They're just friends. Oh. Just friends, huh? <laughs> What did she say the first time you kissed her? She said, Homer, your mustache is so silky. It... I've never... <laughs> Don't tease him, McGee. Is that a package, Mr. Mayor? Uh, oh, oh, yes, yes, it is. It's just a holiday token I bought for you. I hope you like it. Oh, you're a dear. I can't wait to open it. Yeah. We got a gift for you, too, Latrivia. Oh, McGee, look, a lovely crystal fruit bowl. Oh, is Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Oh, that's a honey, Homer. Well, go on, open yours. All right, I'll hear that. Yeah. <laughs> ah, hey, well, a tobacco pouch. <laughs> uh, thank you, McGee. Yeah, it ain't one of them cheap pigskin pouches, either. That pouch is made out of kangaroo skin, which is better skin for pouches than pig skin is for pouches. <laughs> On account of kangaroos already got pouches in their skin. <laughs> I'd never thought of it that way. <laughs> it's, uh, it's very handsome, McGee. Oh, you like it? I, uh, I wish I smoked a pipe. <laughs> Well, Merry Christmas, both Merry of you. Merry oh, Thanks, Mr. Chairman. The same to you. Well, dear, you should be happy now. I'm sure the mayor's fruit bowl costs much more than your tobacco pouch. Please, Molly, it ain't the cost that counts with me. It's the heart that goes into it. And I put plenty into that tobacco pouch. That set me back 500 coupons. <laughs> Coupons. Sure. The ones that come with alfalfa cigars. <laughs> All the trivia did was lay out 20 or 30 bucks cash, but I smoked my tongue down to a nub for him. <laughs> That's what I call giving from the heart. <laughs> sort of paying through the nose, too. <laughs> so you still maintain that everybody but you is out of step? Certainly. I ain't the guy that chisels on costs. I give expensive stuff, like this doll I got for Teeny. Which I wish she'd come and get so as I could see her face light up like a neon sign on a motel with a vacancy. Well, now you make me feel that I wasted my time mending her old rag doll. Oh, well, leave it there in the chair, anyhow. Maybe she'll take it along to be polite. What's really going to knock her for a loop is this... Merry Christmas, everybody. Ah, here's the kid I've been waiting for. Merry Christmas, sis. Merry Christmas, Teeny. Come in, dear. Yeah, come in and look what old Uncle Fibber's got for you, Teeny. A genuine Gloria Glitter doll that's three feet tall and left me plenty short. Oh, mister, it's wonderful. Yeah, I, I knew you'd go for it. Oh, it's just beautiful. <laughs> it's the biggest, prettiest doll I... Oh, look, in the chair. That looks like my Raggedy Ann. Yeah, that's right, sis. I just uh... fixed her up for you, Teeny. You left her here a long time ago, and I stitched up the rips and... Put some more cotton in her. And... Yeah, don't worry about that, sis. Oh, I... my darling, darling Raggedy. You fixed her. I thought I'd lost it her. This is the most wonderful present. Yeah, but look, sis, th this Gloria Glitter doll has got real eyelashes and, and two silk petticoats. You hold her, mister. I want to hold my Raggedy Ann. And a tag that says twenty two fifty. So you're really glad to have her back, Teeny. And she says, Ma. Oh, yeah. I've missed her so much, Mrs. McGee. Now this is the best Christmas ever. You, uh, you don't like the Gloria Glitter doll? Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, she's very nice, but nothing could take the place of my Raggedy Ann. Thank you a million billion times, Mrs. McGee. Well, I'll be darned. 
You're very welcome, dear. It's good to see you so happy. What's so special about that doll, sis? Where'd you ever get that raggedy-looking thing? Mm -hmm. My raggedy Ann is a very old doll. She lay in the attic for years. She lived in a trunk there for 50 long years. With her legs doubled over her ears. And that's where I found her, my raggedy Ann. My grandmother played with her, too. I love every wrinkle in raggedy Ann. And that's why she's smiling at you. Is so loppy and soft. I cuddle her closely at night. She lies there contentedly while you're awake. With her shoe button eyes shining bright. But when I'm asleep, then my raggedy Ann goes out with the fairies to play. I don't know it's my raggedy Ann, but she cannot fool me that way. Your raggedy Ann has a wonderful heart. It's made out of candy, you know. She keeps it sewed up in her cotton inside. You can feel it, but still it don't show. If I had a heart like my raggedy Ann, I surely know what I would do. I'd love everybody like raggedy does. And make up. Like Raggedy does, she'll always be smiling at you. You want to know something, Molly? What, McGee? I've been a heel. Oh, now, you mustn't say that, dear. That's what I've been, a first-class, four-flushing heel. That little kid just taught me something, Molly. What, sweetheart? She taught me, really, that it ain't the gift itself that matters. It's the sentiment that goes with it. Well, I'm glad you found that out. It's a nice thing to remember. And I won't ever forget it. You know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to put Wimp's stuffed bird up where I can look at it always. <laughs> put all these dresser scarf around my shoulders and Latrivia's fruit bowl in my lap and hack off a hunk of the old-timer's plum pudding. Hand me an alfalfa, Tootsie. <laughs> On this Christmas night, the pet milk people and all of us associated with pet milk feel that perhaps the best way to wish you a Merry Christmas is to thank you for all you've done to make 1951 a happier year for those whose paths have crossed yours. For all the friendly words you have spoken, for all the times you have given others new hope and new courage, for all the faith you have rekindled. May the good Lord bless you and may his light shine upon you. That is our Christmas wish for all of you. Good night. Good night. Yeah. To Mr.